we just want to stress the importance of doing math in different ways and it's not just one way to do it. And one thing that we um, get our students to do even in counting money in early grades is to count backwards. And it's kind of the concept that's going on here. What, the, what a student might be asked to do is to take, a, take the 12, which is what's being subtracted here, and add a number that would get it to a multiple of 5 or 15. And that number, of course, will be 3. So 12 plus 3 is 15. Fifth, it, digits or numbers ending in 5 or 10 are just a lot easier to deal with traditionally. So once we get to 15, we take the 15, and then we might add to that a 5, getting a 20. Again, we have a multiple of 10 now, so it's easier to deal with. Then you take the 20, and you might add a 10 to it, getting 30, because it's easier to add 10 to 20 real quick. You're close to your starting number. So you then take 30, add a 2, which is what's left. It's all you got left. And now you have 32. You're back to what you started with. Now to know what was being, what the final answer would be, you add up what you added on counting your way from 12 to 32. And that's all they did. Counted their way from 12 to 32 using easier numbers. 5 and 10 is 15. 15 and 5 is 20. Therefore, 32 minus 20 is 12. Again, just a different way to look at the problem. What's the reason behind this, this possible So change? that students could understand quantitatively why they're doing what they're doing. And, and again, we want to stress base 10. Uh, base 10 is just easier to count with. Base 10, you know, 10. I can add 10 to that. 20. I can add 10 to that real easily. 30. Base 10 numbers are a lot easier to deal with. And as I mentioned earlier, even in counting hide and go seek, we go 5, 10, 15, 20. Those numbers are just easier to deal with. And if we can get students to think in base 10 and uh, using strategies like that, then it just gives them a different way to look at the problem, to think critically about why the answer is what it is. What we have seen is a, a shift that's a learning curve for all of us, including the teachers. And this is a new way of thinking that we, we have to get used to uh, because, again, this has been traditional and in some instances the only way. But again, we want to make sure that students have different ways of looking at problems. And it's been a learning curve in order to get uh, students, parents, and teachers to think that way. But I am certain that it will be advantageous to us because as students progress through school, they pick up different ways on how to do different kinds of problems, and it makes them better math thinkers later on.